morning I have come to take a picture of this beautiful waterfall that you can see right behind me here. But I thought I'd actually use this video and dedicate it to one of the most important equipment purchases I've ever made for landscape photography. And that is my L bracket L plate. I personally feel that L brackets don't get anywhere near the attention they deserve. I mean, I see so many landscape shooters not using them and I really have to wonder why considering the huge benefits that you obtain for quite a reasonably small cost. To be honest, in my sort of 10 years that I've been doing landscape photography, the first eight I'd never even heard of these and it's only really in the last two years that I've really become absolutely converted to them and I would never dream in a million years of going back to shooting without one to be honest. In a nutshell, what they basically do is they replace your quick release plate. So by attaching this, I get Arca Swiss attachments on the bottom and on the side of my camera. And that enables me to easily switch from landscape to portrait composition seamlessly. Basically, it removes portrait landscape photography ball lake. And we all know how that feels. Um, the L plate that I've got here is the Sunway Photo p l D850 which I believe cost me about £45 when I purchased it. So really quite, quite affordable. Generally, when it comes to L plates, you've got two choices. You can either find an L plate which is bespoke made for your camera body. Generally, these will fit better and give you better access to your battery and ports. Or if such an L bracket doesn't exist for your camera body, you can go down the route of getting a universal uh, L plate which basically they're jack of all trades. They're designed to fit all camera bodies. They may not fit perfectly and they may obstruct some of the actual ports, but generally speaking, they'll give you the same benefits. The first real benefit to actually using an L bracket is avoiding slippage. So we all know this horrible camera position behind me. This is what you have to do to shoot portrait compositions without an L bracket. But by shooting like this, you're putting the camera under quite a bit of stress. I mean, the ball head itself here, the camera is pulling against that and also it's pulling against the actual quick release plate mounting itself. And this means that generally the front of the lens, that weight is pulling down. It's constantly wanting to droop so even if you've got these set really, really rock solid tight, you'll find that if you're shooting any kind of exposure with a long shutter speed, you're almost certainly gonna undermine your sharpness because of that constant slippage in the actual lens. By shooting with an L bracket, you totally and utterly avoid that. The next benefit is stability. Now with this setup behind me, what we've done here is we've effectively shifted the center of gravity away from the center of the tripod to an off-center position. And what that means is no matter how stable you get this tripod, there's always a tendency and a risk for it to want to fall off in the direction of where the camera weight is hanging. And as far as I'm concerned, we invest a lot of money in cameras and lenses and equipment, filters, etc. And it's just taking unnecessary risks to mount your camera like this. Avoid that, get an L plate, stabilize your camera setup and you'll feel a lot more confident in your tripod shooting. The next benefit is really quite straightforward. It actually makes shooting portrait compositions so much more easier. I mean, when you're shooting like this off the side, it can be really hard to actually level your shots and frame them exactly how you want because the full degree of that ball head movement is constrained because it's it's hanging off the side. It's it, its movement is, is restricted by the tripod itself. It's quite crazy, really. By actually placing this on top of the ball head with the L plate, you've got the full degree of that ball head movement, and it's so much easier to level your shots. The next benefit is a biggie, panoramics. Now, to be honest, before owning an L plate, I avoided them because I was never happy with the results and I didn't particularly enjoy shooting them. An L bracket has transformed that for me. Shooting panoramics with this kind of setup is just horrible. We've all been there. It's really hard to level your shots and the results just look a bit iffy. I mean, if you think about it logically, when you're spinning your camera like this, taking a picture of the scene behind me, for example, your camera isn't actually spinning around the center point of the tripod. It's spinning around the outside of the tripod. So that means its position relative to the scene behind 
is actually slightly different in every shot. This means that you're going to suffer from parallax, which actually undermines the actual quality of that panoramic. And I think it, in some circumstances, it can actually really, really degrade that seamless transition when you stitch from shot to shot. The final benefit is it's just so much easier to shift from landscape compositions to portrait compositions on the fly. I mean, look at this, landscape. portrait it was that quick 10 seconds if that and that can be invaluable because any landscape photographer knows in the field when the lights kicking off and you've just got absolute magic in front of you you do not have time to waste messing around with your camera trying to maneuver it into these side grooves to get a portrait composition when you think about it when you're shifting your camera on top of the L bracket like this it's not fundamentally changing position and that means that your composition in front of you is so much easier to transition from landscape to portrait within. If you're shifting your camera to the side, the position of your camera is changing, which means quite often you have to make subtle actual changes to your framing. And in the heat of the moment, when you've literally got seconds to capture the right image, that can be the difference between make and break. So for 30 or 40 quid, if that, you get greater stability, superior portrait shooting, amazing panoramics. I mean, the case is pretty strong, isn't it? And I would say if you're a serious landscape shooter and you don't own one of these, you really need to put that right because I rate them very, very highly and I really don't know why more people don't talk about them. I was racking my brains trying to think of some cons for them, but there's really not many. I mean, you could make a case that the L bracket potentially makes the camera bulkier and heavier, but that's just clutching at straws. Realistically, this is a purchase with basically no cons and only pros. I'll now use my L bracket to take a picture of the beautiful waterfall you can see behind me, which is called Glen May Waterfall. Now, this is really difficult to take pictures of because you're quite constrained in your options. At the moment, I'm perched high on a rock with a footbridge just behind me. Usually, with this kind of scene, I'd probably go for a wide angle shot with some foreground interest like you're seeing down there. But those rocks are really difficult to reach, so that's an absolute no-no. And when you go down there, this rock here blocks the actual waterfall itself, so that's an absolute no-go. So really, you're quite constrained. You have to really take a picture from this rock. I mean, you could shoot wide angle here, but that waterfall is just going to become an insignificant feature within the scene and that's not what you're trying to achieve at all. So with my composition that I've got set up here, I am shooting at 60 mils and I'll just make sure you can see that. That is the composition I'm going for. I framed the actual waterfall. I haven't put it bang center. I put it off center because I think that works quite nicely. And really, just make sure that you can still see me, what I like about this waterfall is when you're zooming into it at 60 miles, I'll go up again, you can see the actual full extent of the waterfall. You can see the water flowing through here into the foreground too. But what I really like is these rocks here and particularly these ferns that are just perched on top there. They're really, really lush and green, particularly at this time of year, the start of summer, when all the greenery looks really fresh and vibrant and new really looks quite beautiful. In terms of settings, I am taking two exposures here and I'll quickly explain that to you. One exposure I am taking for the actual water and the settings I'm using for that, let me just quickly remind myself, are I'm shooting at ISO 64, an exposure of about one second um, and I'm shooting at about f9 and that's given me the right kind of effect. I've got circular polarizer on the front just to take the glare off some of the foliage and some of the rocks and make those colors punch out that little bit more. But I'm also going to take a second exposure here and the reason for that is those ferns, when you're shooting an exposure of about one second here, there's quite a bit of wind and because they're perched so high up, they're catching a bit of that wind. So really they're just turning into a big green blurry bit of snot within the actual image so 
By taking another exposure with a faster shutter speed, something like a 20th of a second, that's gonna enable me to freeze frame those. And I think that's really important. I mean, I will have to make some compromises. The ISO is gonna be higher. It's probably gonna be 640, I think. And I'm probably gonna to have to open the aperture up to about F5 probably. But it's really only that part of the image that it's gonna be applied to. And then in post-processing, I'll blend the actual main image with those ferns and that will give me beautiful silky water with a degree of detail but also razor sharp ferns in that top right hand corner two other things to quickly point out with the shot behind me these foreground rocks here they're not i'm not getting them sharp within one exposure um, i'm focusing back on the actual waterfall at the moment at f9 and those foreground rocks just down there they're lacking a bit of sharpness. So I'm going to do a focus stack here, a two image focus stack. One image focused down on the foreground rocks, the other one back on the waterfall. The other thing, I don't know if you can see it, look at that beam of light that we're getting in coming in through the forest there. Absolutely amazing. And I did not anticipate seeing that. I've never seen an image taken here with an actual beam of light coming in there. It's a bit intermittent because we've got clouds coming across. But when it's actually in full force, illuminating that waterfall mist in the air. It looks fantastic. pleased how that shot's come out and I think you'll agree the L plate bracket I keep on changing between them uh, the L plate slash bracket has made shooting here so so easy I mean it was really easy to find the composition and set it up and none of that stupid camera on the side trying to find where the little notch is scared that your camera might fall into there just I can't be doing with that rubbish so yeah, that brings me to a close on today's video. Um, let me know what you think of the, the image that I managed to secure and more importantly, what you think of L brackets. Do you own one yourself? What are your experiences with them? Do you not own one? And has this video convinced you that you really need to put that right soon? Um, pop your comments below. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so to see more content just like this. I'll see you all soon. Take care.